Hey guys, welcome to another casual plant chores video. Um, I'm feeling really repotty today. We're kind of starting it off the same as my last plant chores video where I come in and just like pick plants to repot. Um, and I'm just feeling like repotting slowly, chatting a little bit. I have no plan for this video. It's just gonna be picking the plants, showing them to you. If I see something that catches my eye, I will show it to you. And then we got some plants we need to put on poles. So I finally got my poles from Lauren. I've been out of like the small size D-shaped poles for a while. So I got a whole bunch and there are a few plants I need to get on poles. I don't think I'm gonna get all the plants needing poling onto poles today, but we're gonna do like a couple that I know have been far, far overdue. And like, just as an aside, moss poles, Moss pole maintenance, getting plants onto moss poles, rewanting plants onto moss poles are to me like the most loathsome chore ever in this hobby. So I need you guys to keep me accountable. I don't know why I picked up this plant. I think because I needed to water it. It feels a little bit light. Let me prepare some nutrient water to use um, while we chat. Today we are going simple. I'm just going straight CalMag. This is, well, I'll link the CalMag that I use in the description, but I don't know that it super matters. I'm just doing like a pump and a half in here. I'm gonna let it, what's it called? Diffuse. What's going on in here? Anyone need repotting? Oh. oh. This one has been recently repotted, but the new leaf, the new leaf looks beautiful. Look at that. This is my Mag Chris crossed with Carla Black Yay from Amanda. This was a rescue repot from tree fern, tree fern that was rotty, like roots were rotty into tree fern soil and is loving it, loving the tree fern soil. And again, this tree fern soil is about 50-50, my aeroid mix and tree fern fiber. I just love this substrate so much. Once this leaf grows out, this one should be gonzos. So it'll look a little bit better, hopefully. Check on this Spider Ralph man. Oh no, the label fell off. My Spider Ralph man. So this was also a rescue repot into tree fern soil from straight tree fern. So the leaves really aren't looking so good, but it has also accepted the new substrate and it needs water. Um, last time, if you would have watched that video it was then versus now. There was an emergent leaf that was like trapped inside a dried up sheath. I don't know how long it had been trying to emerge, but as I predicted, that leaf right here has melted off. So it's aborted that one, but it looks like it's pushing another leaf right where my fingernail is. Okay, I'll water you. This week has been, it has been like really busy. But like, I think I'm doing it to myself. Like I think I should just calm down and enjoy my Christmas holidays because I wasn't planning on taking time off, but very like unplanned, I was forced to take time off. So I'm working on a project right now for a coffee shop and we're opening a coffee shop on a university campus. They, they are working through the holidays, but then the operator that I'm working in conjunction with, which is like, is their collaboration, it's the operator and the university. It's like a co-branded coffee shop and I'm telling them what to do. So the operator was like, I'm off for a week. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm off for a week too, which wasn't what I planned for, but I am enjoying like these cozy days at home. I'm just watering that Meg, Chris, Carla. Um, I'm enjoying these cozy days at home where I wake up in the morning, I have coffee, I play some phone games, and then I do what I need to do for YouTube. It was like a blessing in disguise. Okay, so here's one I need to repot today. It also needs a bit of water, but I won't water you because I'm um, going to repot you. So this is my uh, GG Cross with Portier from Woohoo Tropicals. It... It's outgrown its little pot already, um, but I guess it's been two months since I got this plant, but it's freaking loving tree fern soil. This is their soil, which I believe is the HP, the high porosity mycorrhizae soil, which I personally really like, and then um, tree fern fiber mixed in, like a layer at the bottom. So I'm gonna get it into like a taller orchid pot. It's looking slightly chlorotic. 
I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see those spider veins. The leaf before it is slightly chlorotic as well. I don't know if it's because it's like underwater because the, the pot is too small, there's too many roots in here, or if it's nutritionally deficient. So I will give it a good hit. No, no, I won't. But I will make a mental note to give it a good hit of mag, 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 cal mag when I water it next. Because when I repot, I like to just um, inoculate with great white without any extra nutrients. So the great white can form that symbiotic relationship with the roots as quickly as possible. And then like a few weeks later, I'll introduce fertilizers. Yeah, so that's going in the bin to repot. Oh, this one. Okay, this one. <laughs> This one is a definite, definite repot. Are you stuck? Oh my gosh, you stuck to the wall. Oh my gosh. It's like, if you're not gonna give me a moss pole, I'll make my own moss pole. This is my philodendron bicolor, which I have been talking about getting onto moss pole for ages, and I just keep forgetting about it. <laughs> Look at these aerial roots. Look at that. Yeah, it definitely needs to be repot onto a moss pole. And I think, oh, it's so cute. It's such a nice philodendron. It's never sized up for me because I've never given it a moss pole, but it's been growing pretty steadily now and it's in pond, it's so dry. So I think I'm gonna get it into tree fern soil just because um, it's not a plant that I want to be watering and fussing over all the time. And tree fern soil just um, stays hydrated longer. I see mites on it that are quite round and quite white. And no webbing, so I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna assume that's beneficial mites. Okay, so this one is going onto a moss pole. I don't know, I might cut the top off because it, the internodes got kind of long up here, but I'll see how I feel when we get to it. This one I talked about in my last video, I think, or two videos ago. Last video, uh, my BVEP, my Antalachiae from Amanda. This one is gonna go into tree fern soil in drainage because I think this might be happening because the fertilizer burn being in no drainage. I'm trying to, I'm trying to push the fertilization a little bit more and I just, it doesn't, it makes me a little bit anxious because I don't wanna like do an extra diluted feed just for drainage plants. I wanna just mix once and water everything I see with it. This one is on my repot list, but I feel like I need to wait a little bit longer. This is my Lux Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman. And I do wanna get into big pot. I wanna get it into the five inch orchid pot, which is like deeper, a little bit wider, but seeing how soft this leaf is, I wanna wait, cause I don't wanna disrupt the expansion. I think in a week, I'll be able to do it. I just, it's so, 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 so soft right now. I wanna wait till it's like a little bit more rigid before I repot it. I won't wait till it's like fully, fully hardened off and super green. I'll wait till it's like just less floppy. This is my seed of um, blue velvet crossed with dark crystal. Although the dark, okay, so the name dark crystal is like slightly misleading. So this is the seed parent, blue velvet. So I assume it was grown from seed from berry because berry has been re releasing a lot of blue velvet seeds like he sells his blue velvet. And then the pollen parent is this dark crystal, which is like very silvery. So that's not what I think of when I think dark crystal. I think of like crystalline and black, like the tropicals does. So um, yeah, just to give you a sense of what this plant might look like, but it has rooted into the freaking moss. I mean, it's not its fault. <laughs> I said I wanted to get it into tree fern before it roots into the moss, but I'm gonna, is it a bad idea? Should I? Should I just leave it? You know what? I'm gonna leave it. I think I might kill the seed this way. I have just a bad feeling about it. I think I might, it might make the seed just stop growing altogether. So we're gonna leave that. That was my fault, oops. But this one I could repot. This is my Dark Phoenix self from Jing. So this, this is two seeds that have been germinating here, although only one has grown. So I think one is done. One's not gonna grow anything. There's a green seed right here, and this one is working on its second leaf. So I think I wanna just, do I? Should I just leave that green seed in there as just like junk, it's not gonna do anything? And then maybe, maybe I'll just grow it in here, but just take the dome off. 
Yeah, I'll, do, yeah, I'll do that. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the second leaf on here. Let's see if I can just show it to you very gently, but it already kind of looks like a dark phoenix. It's kind of incredible. It has like dark phoenix venation, like it's very pillowy already. I can't believe that it already is portraying like traits on its second leaf. That's just amazing. Somebody is blowing up my phone right now. Oh, it's Charmaine. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna take the dome off and let it grow. Kind of acclimate down to tent conditions, not like, not living room conditions, but just tent conditions. Okay, my bin is looking really sad. There's only three plants in there. My king of spades. I chopped this, just checking for spider mites. I chopped this a couple of months ago, I think. <gasps> I was gonna say king of spades is like such a biatch to grow and propagate, not to grow, to propagate. I, I hope you can see it. It's red, it's, it's, it's there, it's growing. We have liftoff. I'm leaving this ugly leaf on here until it grows out and it'll probably just die on its own. Um, I took this, ooh, <laughs> a root. Oh my gosh, I'm so relieved. I took two cuttings off my King of Spades when I repotted it because I was like, I don't want to unpot it again to cut it because I wanted to cut it as well. So I took some cuttings that I didn't love and one mushed, it just, it just died. It did not want to live. And then this one, the uglier one of the two, decided it wanted to live. Um, but it kind of supports my theory that like the only way to get King of Spades props to grow is to have a leaf on it because I probably have taken like two or three leafless cuts that just turned into, well, sometimes it turns into like hollow freeze dried wood. And then sometimes it will turn into like, like a milky mush. Ugh, I'm so, so relieved because I just love this plant so much. I want to send this to Amanda, um, maybe in the springtime when it's less frosty, frigid in Chicago. Okay, this plant does not need to be repot, but I just want to show it to you because I want to document this emergent leaf color. It's crazy. Okay, this is my red crystal port from Amanda and it's so orange. I don't think I've ever gotten the chance to document like a leaf when it's this orange. So I just wanted to add this to this video because it's just like, it's so vibrant and it's still really floppy. I think it's gonna size up a good amount more before hardening off because this is like the point when it's like super thin and soft, when it expands a lot, like in a very short amount of time. Oh, it's beautiful. Like it's so, it's orange and green. That green in the venation will harden off to like a greeny silver like this leaf it's so funny that like this is a red crystal port and it didn't take on any of the port because i've seen amanda's mother plant and the sinus is like slightly wider but you would still categorize it as a heart shape and i don't think any plants from this batch took on a wide sinus like a flat sinus but look at that it's so 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 orange i remember one time reading a comment from someone like saying emergent leaf colors are not a valid reason to love anthuriums and pay more for anthuriums or like it's not a valid reason for anthurium hype which is like do you not do you not look at the colors like it's a very very valid reason to love anthuriums this is my crib queen just want to show i don't know what happened here it looks like it got munched by a caterpillar the new leaf is like finally sizing up. It's probably like the biggest leaf I've grown. Yeah, it struggled a little bit after I chopped it and then I repotted it, but I will give you some cow mag now just in case that's the issue, but at least it's growing. And it did enjoy the, this one went into tree fern soil as well, but it has a pond layer at the bottom and um, it has rooted out a whole bunch. I'll just let you sit in a little bit of a reservoir. Oh no, it's a leka at the bottom. Huh? It looked like pond on one side, but it's, no, it's like a, I'll just let it sit in a little bit of water. I can't tell if these mites, I think they're all dead. This mite packet is just covered in beneficial mites. This is um, Californicus. I don't know the full Latin name, but Californicus is what I've been using. And I really liked it and I really want to get another um, thing of beneficials because it seemed to work really well. 
and the mites did activate in room conditions which was like my main reason for not using predatory mites because out here I was like they're not going to live and do their magic but they actually worked on the plant shelf. I don't know if my phone's been buzzing this whole time. I'm sorry if that's been distracting. Quick little update on the debile. I repotted this a few videos ago and um, I put it into no drainage with a like layer at the bottom in quite a dense mix of tree fern soil. So I kept a lot of the soil, the leaf on the plant didn't throw a huge fit. This is pretty much par for the course for debile and it's just popped a new leaf. And I can see a bunch of like healthy new roots growing here and it's like quite heavy, but I'm gonna water her because that I found is like the only way I can keep the debile alive is to keep it in like mud, like straight up mud. And I have Lekka down at the bottom so I can keep a reservoir. And even though this substrate is super soaked, I'm going to water until I see a good reservoir. So it's about here now. And hopefully that leaf will grow okay. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Tomorrow I'm going to the shop to do another live sale and I'm just wondering if I should pull some plants right now. I wasn't gonna really bring anything because I didn't really have anything, but I think this RA5 Swamp Bunny with a little mushroom friend could be ready. I was holding it back just to make sure that leaf forms well because like this plant has been like on and off problematic for me, but this one looks okay now. It looks very healthy and nice. So I'll bring this one tomorrow. My little, oh no, oh no. I hope it's okay. Oh no, you're really thirsty. Oh shoot. So I messed up. I had my Burley Marks fantasy in water, but it had like moved and it was like kind of out of the water. So all the roots are dried up now. That's dead. They're all dead. Uh-oh. I will pot it up anyways. I'm gonna put it into tree fern fiber and get it into the XO, get it onto a pole. I am pretty optimistic that it'll bounce back, but this leaf is feeling quite soft now. But we're gonna we're gonna pot them up, so I'm gonna put in the bin. Nothing else in this thingy is ready. No roots. I am really hungry. I just realized I haven't eaten today. I've never in this whole hobby been so on top of my repots as I am like right now, which is actually kind of amazing. This one needs water, but this one's my Anthurium minahasa from Cartel Down. This is the newest leaf and it has like a tiny bit of blister variegation right here. I feel like um, that's not gonna persist, but a girl can dream. Let me give you some Calmag. It's not really sizing up. It's the weird thing. It's been growing like the same size leaves. So when I got it, it had three leaves and this was the biggest leaf on it. This was the first leaf grown in my care. And then this one. And I feel like this one's pretty much done expanding, but I still really love this plant. It's so symmetrical. Like the, the little cells between the veins are so square and it's just like, it's so nice. I love it. I have a running repot list on my phone where I just like, when I think of a plant that needs repotting, I put it on the list. So when I go to repot, I can check the list so I don't forget anyone. And on here, there's a plant that's downstairs. So I think I'm gonna repot in the kitchen again because that's where the food is. I wanna go get some food. And just like moss poles are so messy that I wanna make a mess on my big, big kitchen counter rather than in here. So I'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, I have my coffee, my banana, Doug is staring this banana down so hard. <laughs> I've never met a dog that's as obsessed with bananas as Doug is. <laughs> he just let out the biggest drool string. <sighs> you want a pita banana? Huxley, he doesn't like bananas that much, but if Doug's getting banana, he wants banana. Huxley's not a drooly boy, but Doug definitely is a drooly boy. It's just so crazy how different Huxley and Doug are, like personality wise. Like Huxley came into this world and he was like, it's Huxley bitch and he was so confident. He never, to my knowledge, went through a fear phase. You know how puppies go through a stage where they're like scared of everything? He was never scared of stuff. He was always just like, yep, that's mine. You're my friend, we're gonna party together. And it was like really nice. And um, now Doug 
is going through his fear phase so he's scared of everything which is really difficult to get him to like do his business outside because every single sound a leaf that blows by um a weird looking tree it's all like very scary to him and like doug is so much more affectionate than huxley i would categorize huxley as like very aloof dog he'll only cuddle like in winter time when he's cold but doug just wants to cuddle all the time like he'll just like climb up on you if you're like on the couch laying down he'll just climb up you here and then just like snuggle right in like right around your face and it's just like the sweetest thing he is so sweet like doug is just sitting by my feet wanting attention whereas huxley's already like on off because the food was gone but doug you just want to be around people and i'm really kind of thankful that he hasn't gone through like separation anxiety he doesn't want to be alone so he'll kind of pout for a little bit but he never gets stressed out panics tries to destroy things and try to get out of his crate he's been like a very good sport he's been a very good boy just a very sweet boy okay banana has been had coffee is here let's get repotting i didn't have the heart to bring my softbox downstairs from upstairs so i know the lighting is not great but i think it will be able to see everything i think we'll start with like the straight repots like the anthurians and then we're going to move on to the pole plants which is the burly marks fantasy and the bicolor i forgot to show you the mag Gigi i was gonna repot and i just grabbed it from my living room this is the newest leaf. It does have some more expanding to do, but honestly, I'm not too fussed. It's also in one of those plastic cups. Um, I wanna get it covered a little bit more. It's not super root bound, but uh, living room plants, my living room plants don't get watered as often. So I really don't want it to like dry out. So I'm gonna get it into one of these guys and sit it inside of like a decorative pot. Starting off with the bee vep. Let's get you out. Gently, I'm definitely gonna reuse this tree fern. It's quite new. I think I repotted this um, when I got it from Amanda like October. So it'll only be in a couple of months. So this tree fern, there's no root rot in it that I can see. It smells very metallic. Slowly, 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 slowly. There's actually like so, so much stem on here. And I'm just wondering if I should chop it. Like all of that, it doesn't even have much roots on it. So am I gonna be brave and chop it or not? I would normally just be brave and chop it, but it has been like kind of slower at rooting than my other anthuriums. And I just don't want like the sadness to get even worse. Hey Doug, maybe don't play with a crinkly toy right now. <laughs> You're not doing anything wrong, but it's a little bit noisy. You wanna go lay down with Huxley? Yeah, we're just gonna pot it up. Now, should we be should we be big, brave and bold and use a big pot or a smaller one? My gut tells me big pot. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just picking the leka out from the previous leka layer that I used. Just top it up with some extra. That should be good. So I have the tree fern. I had it in before. I'm just going to add some soil to it. I don't know if that's enough soil that I just mixed, but can always make more. Pop you in. Are you guys watching any good shows right now? I feel like I've run dry of shows I like and I'm such a binge watcher when it comes to shows that are really interesting to me that I end up just watching them all in like a week. And it's kind of hard to find shows that like both me and my boyfriend like because he doesn't, I don't know why, but he doesn't like fantasy. So he would not watch, um, what's that show called? I was gonna say Lord of the Rings. Game of Thrones, he would not watch Game of Thrones. Whereas I think I would like Game of Thrones because I really like drama. 
<laughs> not in real life. I just like drama shows. Some things we both like are true crime, but there aren't a lot of series that are really well done. There's tons of true crime, but I don't think that a lot of them are like very good. Now that I think about it, we watch a good amount of fantasy stuff that he actually really enjoys because we really like um, what we do in the shadows, which we finished watching. We also really like, what's that show? Uh, Our Flag Means Death, both uh, Taiko, Wai Taiko Waititi shows. And both of them are super fantasy. So I don't know what he means. Maybe he doesn't like dragons. I think what it is, is like if it's too hyped up, it turns him off from wanting to watch it, which I can also relate to. But I think I would actually like Game of Thrones. I think I would be super behind the times if I started it now. And sometimes like that's the reason why I never start a show because like it's too late. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've never watched any of the Lord of the Rings. Should I? I don't know. Okay, that one's done. There we go. All right, so now it's in tree fern soil, like a layer. So give it a nice big saucer. I expect good things from you. You're gonna upsize a lot. It's actually pushing or like working on its next leaf here. So don't let me down. I'll do the GG port next. So me and my boyfriend are gonna do, <laughs> if you don't like Christmas, you're gonna be like rolling your eyes so hard. We're gonna do second Christmas <laughs> instead of New Year's Eve or New Year's because I don't give one flying crap about New Year's and I don't think he does either, but also because my Christmas presents for him are not here yet. I'm so annoyed. I only had like stocking stuffers for him to open on Christmas day, but I ordered his main gift on December 1st and it is now, what day is it today? December 27th. I'm so annoyed. It did come from the UK, and I think the annoying part is like I ordered on the first and I think they messed up and they didn't dispatch it for like two weeks after that. So the tracking is all like messed up because it's international shipping. This is really stuck in here. It's been saying three to seven days for like 10 days. I'm getting really antsy that it'll even not be here for New Year's. I also ordered him like another, another gift, like another stocking stuffer size gift that came from Ontario and it's probably going to be delivered today, which I'm really excited. If it shows up while I'm repotting, I will show you because I think it's the most adorable thing. But in case it doesn't show up, I'm just gonna tell you what it is. It's a vintage, like it's from the 70s, either late 70s or early 80s, a small Garfield ceramic figurine. And he's playing football, soccer. I just fell in love with it. I've been in a very knickknacky mood this whole year. I've been collecting um, like novelty teapots. I've been collecting like little little figurines like the Pillsbury Doughboy cookie jar. They bring me a lot of joy. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it when I move to the UK, but that's for later me to figure out. But I've been getting a lot more joy buying that kind of stuff. Okay, I just took the Leka off and we're just gonna keep this intact because that's tree fern soil, that's good stuff. Is this too small even? It's because it's kind of root bound. I don't know if that's enough of an upsize. But then if I do this, is that crazy? No? Okay, I'll do it. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so collecting a lot of those things and he loves Garfield. He loves Garfield, Calvin and Hobbes, all that good stuff. And then he also really loves orange if anyone's met him in real life, which I doubt any of you have other than like a few of my friends who might watch my videos, but he loves orange. It's his favorite color. So I'm really excited to give that to him. Okay, doing the same thing. I'm recycling that tree fern soil from the previous pot, just adding soil to it. There's actually tree fern fiber mixed into this soil bin now, because I was just like, if I'm repotting everything in tree fern soil, or I, it's not a rule, I'm not, definitely repotting everything in tree fern soil, but because it's a substrate I reach for all the time, I've been finding it a lot easier just to mix a huge bin of it rather than mixing tree fern with soil each time I repot. So that's what it looks like in the end. Yeah, so we're doing second Christmas on New Year's Eve. It's also my sister's last day here. She moved to Toronto earlier this year to work for Rockstar, which is like a 
video game studio. So my sister is a video game character artist. So she specializes in hair and Rockstar, their main franchise is uh, Grand Theft Auto. So she's, she's working on Grand Theft Auto. So if you're watching or playing Grand Theft Auto um, in the future, so from six onwards, you might be seeing hair that she drew. So I'm really proud of her. It's like her dream job. I'm so happy for her that like, she's always been really artistic, like so, so artistic. Um, and she's never been able to channel that into something that really pays the bills. So she was a starving artist for a really long time. We both thought we were going to work in the fashion industry growing up and she did fashion design. She went to school for fashion design and that is, First of all, quite a toxic industry. A lot of things just goes unchecked. So um, she got out of fashion and then she just took two years to like be like really, really starving artist where she went to school for video game animation and um, she left with a specialization in hair, which um, has, you know, been really good for her and for her to land GTA is like, was just so nice for her because she just really wanted to work for Rockstar. Um, before that, she was working on FIFA for EA Sports. So this one's done now. I don't know how I'm gonna fit all these massive pots in my tent, but later Alice will figure that out. Yeah, so we are having second Christmas on New Year's Eve. It's last day she's here, so she's gonna stay over. We're gonna do another roast dinner and hopefully Hopefully my presence will be here because if not, I'm gonna be so mad So 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 mad it really broke my heart that my boyfriend didn't have as Many presents to open on Christmas Day as I wanted him to Because he also loves Christmas because he's British. I feel like British people already like at default have quite a strong love for Christmas I don't think he's as obsessed as I am about like the Christmas music and the movies and stuff, but we together really come alive at Christmas time. We spend so much money just making sure we have all our favorite foods. We don't even like do parties and stuff like that. It's just like our favorite foods, our favorite snacks, um, get the lights up, make sure the fireplace is on all the time and just making it really cozy. So if his Garfield, is, oh no, his Garfield will be here. If his main gift is not here by Friday, there's no hope. This one really is not a big repot upsize, but um, it's okay. This hybrid is actually a collaboration between Lauren and Jesse. So Lauren's been selling these MagGGs. The parent, no, actually this whole hybrid is Jesse's. Not, it's not a collaboration. Sorry, I was wrong. This is. Jesse's hybrid. He hybridized a Magnificum and a Nigra Laminum Gigi, and he just like brought all the seeds and gave it to Lauren. And Lauren's been growing them, selling them. I don't think that Jesse really had the space or the will to grow all these seedlings. So he was just like, Lauren, here you go. Here's some stock for your shop. I got this as like a little seedling. Maybe I want to say it was like summertime. I could be wrong. And it's been a really easy plant. It's like one of my only like seedling, just past seedling size anthuriums I'm growing in room conditions. I'm sure other ones probably could grow in room conditions, but I haven't had the guts to. And I've super enjoyed seeing how fast they size up in the tent. Normally with plants, I don't want them to size up that quickly because I run out of space and I get stressed out, especially with plants with like a long stem, but with anthuriums it's okay. And plus I want to breed more because it's so much fun. Okay, that one's done now. Hopefully this leaf will expand bigger because I expect based on the petiole length that it's gonna be a good amount bigger than this leaf and it's still about the same size. So if it doesn't end up as big and it looks like it kind of got stalled, then we know why. And it's all a learning experience for like, testing out when is an okay time to repot plants. So now we just need a pot for it. I have this like pedestal pot. Will you fit? Because it sits under russolites and it's kind of a small plant. So this will give it a little bit of elevation. Okay, don't hate it. Yeah, sure. That'll do. Let me just mix a thing of like tree fern, 
moss and soil for my poles, which you guys could see Doug and Huxley just squished up on one bed together. It's so cute. That's all I ever wanted is two Frenchies that cuddle with each other. It's not because Huxley wants to cuddle, it's because Doug wants to cuddle. He needs, he needs to cuddle. So Huxley will kind of like, if he gets too hot, he'll get up and glue to another bed and Doug will just follow him there and just squeeze himself in there with him. It's just so precious. So this moss for poles is too fibrous. I just kind of break it up with my hands and then I'll go in with scissors, cut them up into smaller pieces. Cause the goal for this is when it grows up the pole and like I want to get it off the pole to chop it or whatever, I want the substrate to ideally come off of the roots a lot easier than just straight moss. And when the moss is small, it's a lot easier that way. And I want to do maybe like a 50-50 ratio of moss and not moss. Find the tree fern helps to allow water to run through and the soil just adds a little bit more nutrition to the to the roots that grow into the pole. Not that I'm a moss pole expert because I can't stand moss poles. I can't stand the maintenance of it. I try to avoid plants now that need poles because it's just a part of the hobby that I realized that I just don't jive with. But these plants that I'm putting on poles, I really like them. So I'm gonna give them what they need. I find that like philodendrons will grow pretty short internodes for a while and then suddenly it'll start growing really long internodes for no super apparent reason because you would think that as it gets taller it's getting closer to light and it would shorten those internodes but it actually does the opposite so i was a little bit late on that one um it's completely my fault and then to this i'll add a bit of tree fern fiber but not too too much and my tree fern also has like perlite and pond mixed through already. And then the rest I think I'll just do like a couple scoops of soil. Or maybe let's start with one and see how it goes. I really hope this is enough substrate for those two poles. I feel like it should be. I'm very grateful that the dogs are being really chill right now. I know there was a bit of noise earlier, but sometimes when they're just like in a play mood and they're play fighting, it's just stress. Okay, I think that's good. That's pretty evenly mixed. This is what it looks like now. I honestly feel like once I use up this moss, cause I bought this moss probably like two years ago. Once I use this up, I'm probably never gonna buy moss again. I guess never say never, but I don't really think I need moss in my life after, after this moss used up. But the crazy thing is like even this moss that I'm using, it's not, it's not like the cheap, moss that's like really low quality but it's not like the highest quality new zealand moss either and even that is like so expensive now the price has gone up quite a lot i think like for the large bale it's probably gone up at least like 50 dollars since a couple years ago okay so i think for the bicolor we're doing the bicolor now i think what i'm going to do is not pre-fill the pole because i want to be able to like you know remember those super long aerial roots i want to be able to guide them into the pole and then put the substrate in I always go the middle, you know how like there's like three buckles so you can make it wider or narrower? I always go the middle one. I never want to do the largest one because it's like way too much substrate. And unless it's like a monstera or something, the roots really aren't that big. This thing is actually so dry, I'm so sorry. This poor plant. We have dry rot or no? We probably have a bit of dry rot. Funny because these roots are so wiry and thin. Seems okay, actually. There's probably a bit of dry rot in there somewhere, but it's not too bad. It obviously is getting hydration because the leaves are very firm. I also find transitioning pond that has organic media in it, because I have orchiata in my pond, I find it transitioning to soil like completely pain-free. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna do one of these pots for it. So this is a philodendron, it doesn't need a big, humongous pot. And I honestly think more roots are gonna grow into the pole than in the, in the pot. I am planning to sit it in a reservoir because it's in the back of my tent and as you can see, it does get underwatered. 
Okay, so just laying the foundation and then we're gonna attach it to the pole and then pot it in. So if I have you at the base, like that, I'm just gonna feed the roots in to the pole like that. So I think I imported this plant um, a year and a half ago and that cup that it just came out of was the cup that I acclimated in when I got it from the Equigenera pop-up. So it is so overdue, it's not even funny. I do find though that this plant rooted really slowly for me and I only ever used pond. So I don't know if it will respond faster to tree fern. Um, other people have said that they found that plant really slow to root as well. So they were like kind of wondering how it's going for me. But at the same time, like this is a plant that nobody really talks about. Ever since Equigenera started to carry this plant, um, people really stopped talking about it. It was kind of hyped for a while in 2020 and it was very, very expensive, but I don't even see like it on import lists anymore, but it could just be that I'm like not really looking at all the import lists. And I also haven't imported from Equigenera in a while. I'm just like not super importing plants, but when I do get import plants, it's like at pop-ups and the tropicals ones are always easier for me to get to because they're always at Nordstrom Tropicals. I should have prepared my Velcro tape. Crap, okay, please don't fall out. That took so long. Now I want to do black, but the only blacks, black pieces I have, probably not long enough. So I'll probably have to do a couple and chain them together. Whew, there we go. Now it's on the pole. Oh gosh, this is so messy. Normally I would put substrate down here and push it upwards, but because all those aerial roots I just fed through are pointing down, I don't want to mess that up. So we're gonna have to go from the top. Charmaine texted us this morning with a photo, uh, or no, a link to the Equigenera website because they released, I don't know if this is new, I've never heard anyone talk about it before, but I haven't really been paying that much attention to philodendrons. But the hybrid that they, I, I assume they created, they call Pink Glory, which is a hybrid of Gloriosum and Linamii, and it is so cute. And it looks like it's crawling, but that's not to say that every specimen will crawl, but actually no, it will all crawl because there's two crawlers in that hybrid. Yeah, so it's a crawler, and this is so annoying by the way. Um, it's very cute. It looks very heavy on the Linamii, to be honest, to me. Like if you look at the hardened off leaf, it looks very Linamii and it looks like it'll just be a very pink emergent leaf, but with some gloriosum -y veins. I don't know what kind of gloriosum they hybridize, like if it's the white veins version or the the verde, the, the D-shaped form, um, D-shaped petiole, I mean. I think I can stuff some up here now, but it is very cute. So definitely hybrid to keep your eye out. I know there are a lot of people who are forever philodendron lovers, and I also found philodendron linamii to be quite an easy grower. I got rid of mine earlier this year, but I can appreciate that plant. It wasn't because like I just couldn't stand it anymore. It's just because I didn't have room for all those big philodendrons anymore. And I don't like philodendrons when they're very giant. It's just not what I want out of this hobby, dealing with moss poles and extending and repotting and all that stuff i'd rather something live in a pot for a little bit longer but just like thinking about how quick it was for me to repot those anthuriums versus how long it's taking me to put this bicolor together um, i do really want to limit how many philodendrons i grow in my house just to keep myself sane because i just know like with a lot of climbers and stuff and i include hoyas in this like when it gets out of control, it really doesn't make me feel very good about myself in the hobby. So I'd rather just have a good time. And I can appreciate um, philodendrons like the Pink Glory from afar, but I don't think I would own it. But if you haven't seen it and that's kind of like up your alley type of plant, maybe keep an eye out for it for your next like Equigenera pop-up or the next time Equigenera is sending a shipment to your city. Okay, finally that hole is filled. Oh, I should have done this earlier, but I'm going to chop off some dried out aerial roots. And then, now we'll get it into the pot. I like to sit these like diagonally on the square 
so the, the round part of the DHA moss pole is nestled into the corner. I think that looks nicer. I will say though, like after repotting a pole plant, it is actually quite satisfying <laughs> to, to admire handiwork. Um, it's almost like you've created a sculpture in some way. It's much more arranging involved in that versus just potting a plant in a pot. But I've been finding like since I started using soil poles, like tree ferny, mossy soil, like my casserole poil, poils, poles, I um, have been battling moss poles a lot less than before and it's a lot less painful. So it doesn't even have to be tree fern. I just like tree fern because it allows water to move through easier. But honestly, like compared to a few years ago, this hobby has gotten so much more convenient in a lot of ways, which is amazing. Like the fact that these poles are so easily accessible, they ship everywhere. Like I think there's probably many different manufacturers in China sending these to different shops around the world. So I would be surprised if there was anywhere that you couldn't get a pole like this. And that in itself, it was a game changer. And they're not even expensive. Okay, I think it's done. Oh, there's one more thing actually. There's one more thing I have to do. So one reason why I love bicolor so much is because it's red and green. I bought a polymer clay kit for my boyfriend for Christmas. It's one of his stocking stuffers. And I've just been making polymer clay things. So I made a little Santa hat, which I think would be perfect for the bicolor, except it's not glazed or anything. So I'm worrying that if I sit it in the pot, it'll get all mucky and gross. I feel like it should be okay. I don't know. It's not my best work, but I tried to make it kind of with the folds of the fabric. And then I just put these in the air fryer. That'll have to do. There it is. Finally done. Poor thing has been just neglected in that corner, climbing up my tent wall. And now it's just finally repot. I think this is gonna go into a deli cup like this. And since this one was so dry when I potted it, I'm gonna give it great white. I'm gonna throw some into the pole since there are roots in that pole. And then good amount here. And then a bit in the reservoir, just a tiny bit. So polymer clay making was so much fun. I used to do that all the time with my aunt. Like we would just make little figurines and stuff like that. It is so fun to do while watching a movie because usually I'm on my phone and I'm playing like phone games and stuff. But doing that was really fun because I really like stuff where you're just sitting there and you just come back to it and perfect it and perfect it and perfect it. And then you let it sit for a while and you come back to it and you add more to it. I just find it so relaxing and um, soothing and I really love seeing the end result of it. My sister made a couple of things. This is her little sushis. Okay, so look at her salmon. Look at her seaweed though, it's so good. She has much more artistic than me. And that's her tamago. Um, I wanna find little like sticks because obviously these are fired off so they're too hard now. So I'd have to like hot glue something if I wanna put a pokey thing in it to sit in soil. But I wanna make stuff for like all my plant pots. I don't know what to make though, but I also don't want to like purchase stuff, but I probably will end up having to purchase stuff because like I could use paper clips, but they will rust in, in the soil. So yeah, um, if you're looking for a very cheap, because I think that whole kit and there's 62 colors in it, but they're very small. Like the pieces of clay are about that big, but there's a lot of colors to choose from. That cost me like $25 or something. And it comes with some tools that aren't great tools, but they are tools. Oh my gosh, Pure Later is here. I think that's Garfield. Okay, I'm gonna wait for him to come to the door, but I'm pretty, oh no, that box looks really big for Garfield. That might not be for me. Oh, it is for me. Hold on. Dang it. That was for me, but it's not the Christmas presents. <laughs> I forgot that I had asked for some tea samples from a company in Canada because I want to use them for the coffee shop that we're opening. Let's see what they sent me. Oh, I did not ask for this. Organic Sencha. Whoa, they sent me so much. And this is what I asked for. No, I did not ask for this, but that's great. Matcha. 
This is like um, summer harvest ceremonial grade matcha. Did they send me the thing that I asked for though? So they do micro ground tea, so similar to matcha, tea grounded to powder. This is hojicha. That's gonna be good. Organic turmeric gold. So that's ingredients are turmeric, ginger, just cinnamon, black pepper. Yum. Earl Grey micro ground. I can make a nice Earl Grey latte with that. And this is what I asked for, masala chai. Cause I, I don't know about you, but I find like chais and coffee shops so, so sweet and they taste almost a bit fruity and not at all like what chai should taste like in my opinion. Elderberry hibiscus, interesting. Sounds like it'll be like very acidic, could be good as an iced tea. Cream of Earl Grey, that I want to try because I like cream of Earl Grey and I think I'm gonna actually use that for the coffee shop and lemon ginger rooibos that I have tried. I'm really excited over the micro grounds though. Oh, that's so nice. He sent me so much, like so, so much. Okay, well that was an unexpected unboxing. But yeah, like there's only ever been like one company whose chai I've used that I find like just awesome, like super spicy. But almost every chai that ever gets sold in, in coffee shops are so sweet. So, so, so sweet. But micro ground is like not the cost effective way to go. Like matcha is so expensive and I refuse to use like a low grade matcha for drinks. So we're gonna try these out. It has nothing to do with plants, but I'm sure there are tons of tea drinkers watching right now. And if you're in Canada, I would give them a try. Their tea is legit. It's not very, very expensive. It's not like the kind that you're sitting there cupping and then like you're drinking the first steep, then the second steep and you're like, you know, making a ceremony of it. It's just like quality tea for every day. And there's like so many to choose from, but not that like cheesy kind of blends with like a bunch of like fruit and nuts and stuff like that. Like David's tea, it's a lot more, it's like proper tea, you know? Okay, early Mark's fantasy. Don't need to fill this pole up all the way, but I want to fill it up at least half. I mean, I could do more because I probably won't be making poles anytime soon. Oh no, wait, that's a lie. I do need to make more poles soon. I need to get my Tordom onto a pole. I need to get my Florida Beauty onto a pole later. So, okay, maybe we won't use all this stuff up. Squish it down a bit. I think that's okay for now. It's going to need a top up pretty quickly. You know what? I'll just add more. I'm gonna live in that EXO and I'm probably not going to be visiting this plant all that much. So let's set him up for success. Okay, that's better. Let's get you tied onto this pole. Okay, because all these roots are dried up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened. I need to get a good amount of stem, like this much into the substrate. So I'm gonna get all that stem from here onwards down into the, I think I'll do, I think I'll do tree fern soil, but like really heavy on the tree fern just to promote rooting. Also, is it just me or is pure later, like pure later delivery people the nicest? I feel like everyone has a different pure later guy and they're always so nice. There is one pure later guy that has been delivering to where I work for years. And I, one point hadn't seen him for probably two years because of COVID and he remembered my name and he was so, always just seems really happy to see everyone. And I know the Pure Later guy for the shop <clears throat> that, that delivers to Lauren is so nice. He like loves Frankie, he's always so excited to see him. He's really sad if Frankie's ever not there. I'm out of black, but I'm gonna do one more for the top just to make sure that that top leaf doesn't grow sideways off of the pole. Like that maybe? Just to keep it straight-ish. So it kind of curves around a little bit, but I think that looks all right. And it has this much pole left, which isn't a ton. 
we will do, okay, we'll do Lekka at the bottom. I'm gonna sit it in a deli cup. Ideally, most times I water it, will just have to be through the pole. And then every now and then I'll have to add a bit to the reservoir, but I think this is gonna be a super low maintenance plant. Last time I grew it in straight tree fern and it was so happy and I barely ever had to water it. It's kind of incredible. How's that? That looks all right, I think. I'm just adding a bit of extra tree fern into my tree fern soil bin. But what I'm adding to this pot is mostly tree fern. Just a little bit extra soil. I feel so sad that I let that plant dry out, but I'm really glad I decided to film today because had I not, um, discovered or like had I not decided to do like a pole chores video I would have just left that water rooting cup there for like another week and this plant would have been toast it would have been really hard to get it to hydrate again because even right now I can feel it's like very dehydrated <laughs> this is the only piece of Burley Max Fantasy I have left because I sold the mother plant a few weeks ago so it's I feel sad but glad at the same time okay that's all done I really packed the soil in there so this pole is like really sturdy. So now all I have to do is inoculate. Just inoculating in the pole again, but because that tree fern was quite wet, I don't need a ton. And like just in case those roots were any good, <laughs> we'll go into the substrate. I feel deja vu because the last time I did this with my Burley Mars Fantasy, was here in this kitchen about a year ago. I did plant chores. I don't know why it's so vivid in my memory, but that I remember like yesterday. And I think that's all the plants. Yeah, that's all the plants, all done. Okay, I'm gonna clean up, but seeing as I showed you the tea, I really wanna try the chai with you on camera and give you my actual first impression. But that's literally all the plant stuff. So that's what you're here for. Um, we'll see you next week. If you're interested in my chai journey, which to be clear, we're not making the most authentic chai ever. We're making a nice chai, nicer than your average chai, or I hope, or basically what I hope to put on the menu in this coffee shop. All right, chai time. Got my scale. I'm going to make something like a simple syrup. I would love to do honey, but because I think honey would be good in this, but I don't think that is going to be cost effective as like a standard recipe. So I think this cup is about 12 ounces, which means I would typically do about 15 to 20 grams of syrup. So that's, usually one to one. So I'll probably put 10 grams of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. I'll put eight grams of sugar. Seven grams of sugar. Yeah, that's seven. And oh, I didn't even boil my kettle. I don't have a bamboo whisk, so we're gonna use this. One teaspoon per eight fluid ounces. Let's first make our simple syrup. So I'm gonna put another seven grams of hot water in here. whisk that. I really should invest in a bamboo whisk if I want to drink more matcha because I've been making matcha lately. Okay, I want to see how much a teaspoon is because I had costed out using, oh no, not this. I had costed out using three grams. So I want to see how much this is. Okay, actually two grams is a lot. That's only a little bit left and that was two grams. Okay, we'll put the rest in. That's 2.8 grams. Okay, so that's what I had costed out and we'll see if it's spicy enough. We'll whisk that again. I could have sworn I had a sample of a bamboo whisk somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. 
We're getting somewhat of a foam. I don't know if you can see. Just make sure I get everything. And um, I don't have a steam wand or anything in this house. Would love to have a espresso machine, but it's just not, just not something I can afford. I'm gonna use water and then top it up with a bit of, I'm gonna do milk because that's gonna be the default. So we'll just add water about three quarters up and then top it up with milk. In reality, like at the shop, it will be that base minus the hot water and all steam milk. It's a little weak. A little weak for, mm. I think I put too much water, but the flavor of the spice is really nice. And like, it's not that sweet with, what was it? 15 grams of simple syrup. So seven grams of sugar. I like, okay, let's let it sit. It's gingery. You can definitely get the cardamom. It's not gritty. Like microground tea can be like really gritty, <laughs> like dry tasting in the mouth. It's not very astringent. If there's anything I don't like about this, it's that it tastes watery and I just put too much water. But if it was just made with um, steamed milk, it would be a lot more fuller tasting. I actually kind of like this sweetness level, but yeah, it's just too watery. The more I'm drinking it and the, the spice is like building up, I'm liking it more and more, but yeah. I'm pretty convinced I'm gonna use this. All right, you guys, I'm gonna end it here. I'm sorry I couldn't show you Garfield, but I hope you enjoyed uh, another casual repot plant chores video. But yeah, if you're watching this the day it goes up or the day after, happy new year. This video marks the end of my month of double uploads. So we'll be back to the once a week upload schedule. I would love to do two videos a week, but honestly, I just don't have that much to say. <laughs> Thank you guys for everyone who tuned in to my Christmassy kind of Christmassy videos. It wasn't that Christmassy this year, but thank you for everyone who spent the holidays with me. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.